Nuclease Power Management Demystified, Part 1 Concepts In this video, we're going to cover the what and the why of nuclease power management. We are also going to cover certain terms, such as the peripheral state, system state, DVFS, operating point, and the power controller. Let us start with the what. Power management in Nuclease is provided by the Power Management Services component. This is an OS service that takes care of various power management tasks. Power Management Services also provides a standard interface for drivers to participate in power management. A standard set of APIs is also exposed to applications to manage system power with ease. So why is power management important for embedded devices? To visualize this, let's consider an iPhone. What if an iPhone consumed a lot more power? It would require a bigger battery. A bigger battery means larger size. A brick-sized iPhone is likely not to be as popular of a device as it is today. Besides a larger size, there also exists an issue with heat dissipation. Any power used from the battery is converted to either light, RF radiation, meaning the signal sent to the cell tower, and the remaining power is converted to heat. In order to dissipate the heat, the iPhone would require a more complex mechanical design and potentially even a cooling fan. The end result being a device that is definitely not as appealing. To summarize the benefits of power management, battery life, the longer the battery life, the happier the customer and the smaller the battery size that has to be included with the device. The next benefit is simplified mechanical design. By consuming less power, the mechanical design of the device can be simplified because of less heat that needs to be dissipated. The third benefit can be easier standard compliance. Standards such as FCC, RF noise emissions can be easier met if the device is optimized to avoid large power spikes. So let's talk about the concept of power management. What is power management all about? As it turns out, power management boils down to a very simple rule. Turn off anything you don't use. Let me give you an example. Let's consider a home. A home is lighted by electricity. One option is to turn on every light in every room and keep it on. Though this would be very convenient, it would definitely cost a lot of money. A more efficient option is to turn on only the lights that are needed. For example, if I walk in from the garage, I turn on the laundry, I turn it off when I'm not there, as I progress through the house, I turn on only the lights that are needed. What we just saw is power management for a house. Turns out it's not much different for a device. If you think of a single room as a peripheral device, an embedded device power management parallels the house strategy. Let's think of each room as a peripheral, a device driver. Each device driver has full power to control the usage of power for a particular device. A device driver does it automatically without any involvement from the operating system. What the Nucleus operating system does, it allows you to impose limits. We call those limits peripheral states. For example, if a peripheral state for a specific device driver is set to off, that means the device driver is not allowed to burn any power which means the device has to stay in its lowest possible power state and remain there until the peripheral state changes. Once the peripheral state changes, the device driver is allowed to control the power as long as it does not exceed the peripheral state limit. A maximum power state supported by a device allows the device driver to burn any amount of power that is necessary to provide the required functionality. Please note that setting the peripheral state to on does not require the driver to burn power. It only allows it to burn if the functionality is required. Device drivers are required to actively minimize power usage and only burn as much power as needed to provide the required functionality. A good example is a serial port. A serial port will not turn on unless A. Peripheral state is on and B. There is an application that has opened the serial port. If no one is using the serial port, there is no need for the serial port to turn on. So what about the number of peripheral states? How many states should each device support? Each device driver determines for itself how many states make sense, and then it advertises to the operating system how many states it supports. The minimum number of states that is required is two, a state off and a state on. The majority of devices fall in this category. A maximum number of states is 256, 0 through 255. In addition, there is a special wildcard state, 255, that means the highest supported state. A set state 255 command means to the driver to set the state to the highest supported state. Even though the set state command can be issued against each individual device, 
it is much more efficient to define system states. A system state is simply a defined set of peripheral states. In this example, we see three system states, off, standby, and on, and for each one of those states, a device state is mapped. For example, for a system state 1, standby, device 1 is set to on, device 2 is set to sleep, device 3 is off, and device 4 is off. Once the system states are defined, switching between them is as simple as calling an API. The API in question here is an UPM set system state. There is also a corresponding get system state API. To map an additional device to a system state, an UPM map system power state API should be used. There is also an UPM request minimum system state, an API which will be discussed further down in this video. Our next topic is DVFS. DVFS stands for Dynamic Voltage and Frequency Scaling. DVFS allows you to set the frequency at which the CPU operates, which in turn can translate into power savings. Lowering the CPU frequency often allows the lowering of the voltage at which the CPU operates, offering further power savings. Nucleus Power Management Services abstracts the DVFS in terms of operating points. An operating point defines a set of conditions for a CPU to operate at. Those conditions include voltage and frequency. This example shows three operating points defined for a CPU. Operating point 0 at 1 MHz typically used when nothing is happening in the system. Operating point 1 at 90 MHz when some processing power is required. And operating point 2 at 180 MHz, in this case full speed ahead. One can discover the number of operating points by simply querying the power management system. One can also find the frequency associated with the operating point using another API. There are a number of other APIs that can be used to get further information. To switch between operating points, all that has to be done is the set current operating point API has to be called. Though it is very simple on the surface, under the hood, Power Management Services takes care of a lot of complexity in order to be able to achieve this. For example, all affected drivers must be stopped for the duration of the transition. After a successful transition, all affected drivers need to be informed of the new operating point. All this complexity is hidden by the Power Management Services. Now that we have defined peripheral state, system state, and operating point, we can talk about minimum requests. Minimum requests can be issued for peripheral state, system state, or an operating point. The way a minimum request works is any application that requires a certain minimum system state, minimum peripheral state, or a minimum operating point to be able to provide its functionality needs to issue a minimum request to the power management services. For example, an MP3 player application could request a minimum peripheral state to a DSP that is required to render audio. It could also issue a minimum operating point request in order to keep the CPU from falling below a certain frequency. Any minimum requests that are issued need to be released once the need for the request is no longer there. The minimum requests mechanism allows different applications to inform the power management services about its needs to keep certain peripherals on or to keep a CPU operating above a certain frequency. Now that we have defined a peripheral state, a system state, and an operating point, we can talk about the power controller. The power controller brings it all together. It collects various system events, including user activity and inactivity timeouts, and based on information, it transitions between system states. When transitioning between system states, the power controller also attempts operating point transitions. The reason why I use the word attempts is because an operating point transition may not succeed. An operating point transition may fail, for example, when there are outstanding minimum operating point requests. Other reasons for operating point transition failure in includes a driver that vetoes the operating point change due to its requirements at a time. So let's look at all these concepts in action on an actual device. Let's say we have the following peripheral devices. Our look at this system starts at system state 1, standby. In this state, most devices are off and only the keypad peripheral is set to on. Once a key on the keypad is pressed, a user activity notification is generated. Upon receiving this notification, the power controller will initiate a state transition to system state 3, user active. In this system state, the LCD is fully on and the keypad backlight turns on. At this point, let's say the user starts an application that requires wireless connectivity. That application 
would issue a minimum peripheral state request to the wireless adapter to perform its connectivity. Once the application has completed its connectivity, the wireless adapter driver can throttle back its power usage even before the application releases its minimum peripheral state request. Once the user stops using the device for a specified amount of time, an inactivity notification goes out. Upon receiving this notification, the power controller will transition the system to system state 2, user idle. In this state, notice the LCD controller is still on, however its backlight is dimmed and the keypad backlight has gone off. If the user does not interact with the device for another specified timeout, the power controller will transition to state 1, standby, which is the initial state we started with. So let's review. Device power management is analogous to house power management if we think of each room as an independent device. Each individual device driver manages the device power up to the imposed peripheral state limit. A system state is simply a set of peripheral states. An operating point defines the voltage and the frequency, which means the speed of the CPU, and the power controller brings it all together by transitioning between system states and operating points. And all of this allows the device to do one thing, turn off anything you don't use. Thank you for watching.